The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Well, praise the Lord and hallelujah. Welcome to I'm Alive. Praise God. I hope you've had an excellent April. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time of the year. I love springtime, Phil. Yes, I do Just too. love it. And uh, got some plants out early in uh, the first, uh, first of April. I got out some cabbage and some, co and some uh, broccoli. And uh, been eating my asparagus out of the garden. Oh man, good stuff, fresh. Just go out and pluck it, and you can eat eat it going to the house or cook it when you get to house. Just what? warm it up good. I really like it. Uh, put some se seasoned salt on it. Uh, what do you call that? Um, what kind of salt? Garlic salt. Garlic salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. So enough about that food stuff. I hope y'all doing well. We're just doing good. Yes. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good and His mercies endure yes. forever. And we just thank God. Thank God. Right. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we, we pray that, that you, when this service is over, you said, man, I'm glad I tuned in tonight. Absolutely. So that's yes. what we're hoping and believing for. And uh, so we'll just go to the Lord in prayer and, and ask Him to assist us to make that happen. Yes. Father, we're thank just you, so Lord grateful Jesus. for this another opportunity to be here in these people's homes or wherever they're watching this video from or this telecast. And we pray, Lord, that we'd be effectual for you, that we would have an effectual door of utterance open to us, that we might proclaim the good news gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we might talk about you and just uh, exalt you and just uh, glorify you, Lord, in our teachings. And we thank you for these opportunities to spend a little time with these wonderful folks. Many of them watch yes, week after you, week Lord. after week. And we thank you for each mm -hmm. one of them, as well as we thank you for those that have underwritten the expense mm -hmm. of these telecasts. We pray that your uh, kingdom come and your blessings would be done in their life and many a great accomplishment this year in their businesses, uh, whatever they're doing, they put their hands to would prosper. Yes. And they'd be in health and uh, your kingdom would come and your will would be done. We pray, Father, tonight that you yes. would use our son for your glory yes. and may he speak of the or as the oracles of God present the truth real simple yes. where people could latch a hold of it real easy. Lord, if there's someone watching that's hurting in their body, uh, hurting in their relationships, yes. or maybe don't know you, Lord Jesus, yes. we pray that the ministry of the Spirit of God yes. would be active in their lives tonight as the Word yes. of God goes forth, that it would bring healing and deliverance and wholeness mm -hmm. and well-being to each and every one of them. And if there's someone lost, the glorious light of the gospel of peace would come on in their spirits and they'd be gloriously born again. In all of it, God, Thanks. may you be glorified and may people be blessed is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We start our program typically from uh, Romans chapter 1, Paul writing to the church at Rome. He said, I'm ready to preach. I trust we are. And he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And that's all about the gospel. That's what we preach. Jesus, Jesus Christ and him crucified for the sins of mankind. He who knew no sin was made to be sin, that through the sacrifice of his life, we receive yes. pardon for our sin. We yes. trust in the blood of Jesus to wash our sins away and to redeem us oh, from Jesus. our lost condition and thank God that he yes. has. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm Amen. thankful that now we are children of God and I know Absolutely. I know that I know my Redeemer liveth. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. He's alive in my heart and life and I Absolutely. wouldn't even consider going out my door in the morning if I didn't know <laughs> Jesus was going with me. I'll tell you that. I'm thankful, thankful, Amen. thankful for the goodness of God and the yes. grace of God. And uh, he loves you tonight and, uh, and he has has brought righteousness through faith and trust and confidence. How can our righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees? I tell you how it can. Born Be born again. again. Yes. That's the only way it can happen. The Pharisees were very much sticklers for the Word, but yet they missed the living Word when He came. Right Their there. eyes were not open to see it. They were living under the old law, the law of commandments. But Jesus came and fulfilled the law of commandments. He is the fulfillment 
fulfilling of that law for us. And if we'll trust in Jesus, it's just as if we did all the commandments of God ourselves. But it's Him yes. living in us. We couldn't do it. We, we proved that we couldn't do it. But praise God, when He came alive in our spirits, now in cooperation and in conjunction mm -hmm. with Him, joined heirs with Him, we can keep the commands of God. Are we exempt from the commands of God? Well, no. the only way we're exempt from them is that the law has been fulfilled in right. us. The law of love supersedes Absolutely. all the commands. Amen. And because of that law of love living in us, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We can fulfill the will of God, every jot and tittle, just like Jesus did. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. So we're not trying to get out of it. No, we're trying to get in it by the grace of God. Absolutely. Amen. Well, son, good to have you with us again. Amen. To be here, and Pop. we trust you're ready to go. And yes. we'll just uh, pass the ball to you and you can keep it and run with it as long as you want to. All right. Well, I think I've got about 20 minutes <laughs> okay, here. Okay, so go I'd for it. Do that. So we, we've been talking about love. Yes. And uh, one of the things about love, you have to remember that the Bible says that love never fails. Never. So if you love, you always win. Amen. No matter what goes on around it, That's love right. always wins. That's right. So if I'm going to walk in love, what I've got to do is I've got to focus more on my actions toward others than their actions toward me. If I concentrate more on what other people are doing towards me, then it's going to hinder me in walking in love towards them. So where is your focus? Is your focus on someone has done you wrong or someone is doing things wrong or, or are you persecuting others? Are you watching out there looking to judge others? Or are you looking at yourself saying, I want to be sure I'm walking in love. I want to be sure I'm speaking in love. I want to be sure the words coming out of my mouth are lining up with the Bible. And so that's the, the focus that we have to make when you walk in love because walking in love is a choice. Amen. You have to choose to walk in love. Not everything that everybody does is going to be pleasing to your flesh. Of not. It's not always going to be pleasing to your mentality. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some things that people do will grieve your spirit. Mm -hmm. It'll grieve you on the inside. You just wish they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't change the way we feel about them. Mm -hmm. If they do things that, that make us angry or, or hurt us in some way, we still walk in love because it's a choice and love never fails. Mm -hmm. In Romans, the 13th chapter and the 8th verse, it says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. Mm -hmm. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. What law? The law, of love. the law of love. So what is that law of love? They asked Jesus, they said, said, good master, what's the greatest commandment? He said, well, there's, there's a couple of them. Said, the first one is love God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. Love God. All you because being. if your whole being loves God, he said, the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. He said, on this hangs all the law. Mm -hmm. So that law of love it, it encompassed everything because if you're walking in the law of love, you won't do these other things that are listed in Romans. Mm -hmm. So that law of love is just like a, a law of gravity. It works every time. Mm -hmm. Now, you for a moment can supersede the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. You can throw something up but it will come down. Mm -hmm. You can get in an airplane and, and at, at a certain speed the law of lift mm -hmm picks the airplane up. Now many times people think that it's the air coming under the wings, but it's actually the air going over the top of the lift. wings that picks that plane up. Mm -hmm. What is that called? It's the law of lift. And as long as your speed and everything is set at a certain uh, level, that law of lift will supersede the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. But eventually that plane will come down because it runs out of fuel and it's got to have more fuel. Mm -hmm. So that law of gravity always wins. In the law of love, when we love people that sometimes don't seem to love us, it might seem like that that law of love is failing. But I'm telling you, the Bible says that love always wins. It wins every single time. So there might be some things going on that seem to be superseding it at the moment, but the law of love always wins. Remember that faith works by love. So if I'm believing for a change in my loved one's life or a change in my life or a change in a circumstance and I don't walk in love, then love fails because I chose to get out of love. But if I will stay in love, my faith won't fail. 
because that faith works by love. So love is super important. It says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, mm -hmm. for he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Love, look at verse 10. This is Romans 13, verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Mm -hmm. When you say love works no ill, mm -hmm. that means nothing, no ill. Dad brought up something, I think it was last week's program, and I kind of chuckle because people do this, that they know that two different people might have had some issues that it could have been years ago. Mm -hmm. And they get in the middle and kind of bring that up just to see people react. Yeah. Think okay, it's funny. that is working ill to your neighbors, mm -hmm. right? Love works no ill. That means you don't try to gain over your neighbor. You don't mm -hmm. try to take something from your neighbor. Your neighbor being any other human, you don't work anything ill. You don't talk bad about them. You don't speak bad about them. Don't speak negative about people. Amen. If we're continually negative, then we're continually walking in darkness because the Bible says that if we hate our brother, then we're walking in darkness. And this says that love works no ill. Mm -hmm. So if I'm working ill to my neighbor, I'm basically walking in darkness. Amen. And so I don't want to do that. Uh, the, the Message Bible says it this way. It says, don't run up debts except for the huge debt of love you owe to each other. It says, when you love others, you complete what the law has been after all along. See, the whole thing is based on God's love for us. Jesus coming, His death, His burial, His resurrection is based on God's love for us. Do you know why the new covenant is so special? The new covenant is so special because it is based on Jesus and not based on you and I. It's based on His work. Mm -hmm. He's the one. He accomplished it. Why? Because He loved you. Mm -hmm. And He could see that man could not fulfill the law. The law was there, but they just couldn't seem to keep it. So they made this plan. God sent Jesus, who was able to fulfill living sinless, and He fulfilled the law. He didn't come to abolish it. He said, I came to fulfill the law. Amen. And He fulfilled it in His actions and in, in the death, burial, and resurrection. He was able to give you that fulfillment of mm -hmm. the law. Well, why did He do that? Because we couldn't keep it on our own. So we understand that, that the law of love is a law that always works. Mm -hmm. It said, the law code is don't sleep with another person's spouse, don't take someone's life, don't take what isn't yours, don't always be wanting what you don't have, and any other don't you can think of. <laughs> I like that. Any other don't. I used to do this on my... Uh, we have youth camp, and it says, you know, don't bring water guns, don't bring firecrackers, and don't. It's got a whole list of things don't bring. And then at the end of it, I said, and such like, yeah. because that way, if a kid thinks of something I hadn't thought of, I've got such like such that like. I can point to. Mm -hmm. So he says, don't, uh, uh, don't think of what, what is this? Any, and other, any don't. other don't <laughs> you can think of. All right. Uh, he said, finally, it adds up to this: love other people as well as you do yourself. Mm -hmm. Love other people as much or as well as you do yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong when you love others. I like that. Many years it, ago, I we'll put on the church sign out there, you'll never go wrong going right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When you add up everything in the law code, the sum total is love. Right. right. You can fulfill all the law by walking in love. Mm -hmm. Look at John chapter 3 and verse 14. It says, Moses, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. We know that that is when Jesus was lifted up on the cross. Mm -hmm. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Yeah. For God okay. so loved the world. Now see, 
we all know John 3.16. It's the, what I call the most famous scripture in sports mm -hmm. because people will put John 3.16 on a poster mm -hmm. and hold it up at a football game or a race or everything. Mm -hmm. But they forget that verse 15 is there and they forget verse 17. Mm -hmm. God loved the world, so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world. Right. It was already but that, under condemnation. It's already under condemnation. Right. But that the world through Him might be right. saved. Do you know what brought condemnation? The law. Mm. Because if there was no law, Right. Then you wouldn't know you were wrong. Paul said, I didn't know nothing about it until I read the law. Right. And it slew me. <laughs> it, it, it absolutely slew him. Right. So real love gives your one and only. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom, and I don't remember doing this, but this is what my mom said I did. So I'll, <laughs> my mom never lies to That's me. That's right. And so uh, she said that when I was little that I would take a cookie and break it in half and I would give my sister the biggest half. Mm -hmm. Now I can't imagine that I ever did that, but I, my mom said that I did. And, and so what, what does love do? Love always gives its best. Love always gives its one and only. In John 13 and verse 34, it says, A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. And then he qualifies this love. Now, sometimes I think that I'm walking in love towards someone. I, I'm thinking I'm doing good, mm -hmm. you know. But then he throws this in there, as I have loved you. Jesus loved so unconditionally. So if I'm going to love like He does, and He didn't say this is a, a new suggestion. Mm -hmm. See, we could read that. A new suggestion I give unto you. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be, suggestion. oh, well, that, you know, He suggested it's it. but a man, you know, not suggest. That's like going to a restaurant and saying, well, we suggest you get this. And you mm -hmm. say, no, I want to do it. No. He said a new commandment. What is mm -hmm. a commandment? That, that means that's the law. That's the rule. That's what you have to do. I command you, if I'm your Lord, He says, if you're following me, this is the commandment I give you, mm -hmm. that you love one another. Well, okay, all right, I got it. Love one another. Then he says, as I have loved you. Right. He didn't just say love one another. He qualified the quality of the love. Mm -hmm. Listen to that statement. He qualified the quality of the love. What quality of love must I give to fulfill his commandment? the same love that He gave me. Amen. Well, what love is that? That's unconditional. That doesn't have conditions placed around it. If you do this, I'll do this. He says, you love them as I've loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know you have my disciples. And that's if you have love today, one for another. It is possible. Because the love of God has it been is. shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. It is. Uh, before Christ, it wasn't possible. Right. I mean, you you gonna you might have been a pretty good guy, but somewhere or another, you're not going to, you, it ain't going to happen. Yes. But now that the love of God is shed or brought in our hearts, and the Spirit of God is living in us, it's possible that we can love like Jesus. It is because it's the same Spirit that He had on the inside of Him. We and Romans says, I mean, how did Romans say that? When, when it said that the Spirit was on the inside mm -hmm. of you, what kind of Spirit did He call it? Hmm. Okay, it, it is a spirit of love. He said, the love of God yeah. has been shed abroad in, in heart. your hearts. Mm -hmm. What's your heart? Your spirit, man. On the right. inside of you, it's the same love that God has. Amen. We had a guy in a, in a mass community, he's passed on now, but he'd always say, love like Jesus. Uh -huh. That's what he, his, that was his favorite word. Just like when you say bye, he'd say, love like Jesus. You know, that would be uh, just, just a thought. That'd be a great post-it note to stick on your mirror. Absolutely. You know, the mirror of your car, the mirror mm -hmm. in your house. Mm -hmm. Every mirror, every time you look at yourself, see. I, we put I a big mean, poster up there in the community that says, love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Yeah. Well, when we talk about love, Dad, watch what. Now, this is the Message Bible. And it, it just gives some clarity because there's some words in the King James that we don't use mm. that often. But, but listen to love. So Jesus said to love like He loved. Well, watch this definition of love. And let me ask you as, as I read these things, would you look at yourself and say, okay, yeah, I got that one or I don't. And, and judge yourself yeah. properly. How am I doing? How am and, I doing? And, and please... If you're sitting in the room with your spouse, don't point at them and say, well, you ain't doing that one. You, this is between you and God. You look at the TV, look straight ahead. Don't even look at them right now, all right? All right, Linda, all right. you listen to this, Linda. Well, I, yeah, listen, I'm not saying a word about that. 
Number one, <laughs> love never gives up. Mm. Love never gives up. I love them. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep speaking the word over them. Love mm. never gives up. Two, love care, cares more for others than it does for self. <sighs> oh, How I you mean, doing so far, son? <laughs> uh, Are you one let, for one or not? <laughs> did I not just say, let me go back to that. Okay, hold it. If you're sitting okay. there watching okay. this, okay. don't talk to the go person ahead. Go ahead, you. go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Now, when it says doesn't want what it doesn't have, that means it's not covetousness of that. Right. We have all things right. liberally given right. to us through the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. D do you see this one? Now, this is talking Love about pride. Strut. Love does not strut. Like a hen. Cluck, 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 yeah, cluck, look what I laid. Look what I laid. <laughs> yeah. It lo love's not prideful or boastful. Uh, they go, look at me. Love does not try to get people to look Bible at me. The Bible really gets it out there. Oh, it, it does. It doesn't have a swelled head. Oh, my. <laughs> Listen. Uh, I, I, it, it's, it's amazing. Redneck wrote that Bible. That ain't, that ain't a message Bible. That's it it is amazing Bible. to me, and, I, and, and close your ears because I got to <laughs> close mine. It's amazing to me how many uh, Christians have a, a, a prideful thought because of their religiosity. Yeah. Because they're so. I'm, I'm all. I'm telling you, without him, we could do nothing. We Absolutely. have nothing. We know nothing. Absolutely. Love doesn't force itself on others. Mm-hmm. Is it, it is not always me first. Wow. How many times do we see people that it, well, I want what I deserve. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's think about that. Now, if you're watching this program, you're most likely a Christian. If you're not, I, I pray that you will become one. Mm -hmm. But as a Christian, do we want what we deserve? Well, I just want what I deserve. I want what's mine. No, we don't. We have earned and deserve hell. Mm -hmm. We get love and grace and mercy and we get heaven. We deserved one thing. Jesus gave us something else. I don't want what I deserve. I thank God for the mercy of God. Well, we go back 25 generations of how somebody was treated in their <laughs> Back way back back, and we expect uh, everything yeah. to come to us because of some wrong yeah. done to them. Yeah, I, uh, I that's ridiculous. Uh, love doesn't force itself at others. It isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. Mm -hmm. It's not easily angered. And I tell you, sometimes just a little thing, and it, we, we call it, well, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. Anger well, management school. Let me tell you, the camel needs to work out. Right? Because the camel needs to have a stronger back. Mm -hmm. Amen. It doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Now, parents. Hi, parents. Hi, moms. Mm -hmm. Hi, dads. One of the top complaints that I get from teenagers, just to clue you in. If you don't have a teenager, but you know somebody does, let me clue you so you can clue them. <laughs> they will tell me that mom and dad will bring up things from their past on their grade card or their report card or something that's done. They said, you know, it seems like that it's gone. It happened two years ago and something similar or close to it could happen. And they went, well, I remember what you did two years ago. Love doesn't keep score. Right. Drop and it. when you say you forgive them, don't use that the next time something similar comes up. Use the thing that's at hand mm -hmm. and correct them with what's at hand, but don't condemn them for the past because God doesn't do that. Right. He doesn't come to you and say, well, you know, three years ago you did this same sin. Mm -hmm. No, you ask Him to forgive you and He forgets it. And as a human, if I am going to walk in the love of God, I can't keep score. One of the definitions of forgiveness is... You drop it. Absolutely. It's gone. Now, also, that's one of the things with teenagers that I get. But also, let's say this, spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't keep Most score. Most anybody like that. I mean, you can bring People up you work them with. things. Absolutely. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't revel when others grovel. Mm. Wow. It takes pleasure in the flowering of the truth. Do you want the truth to come out? Mm -hmm. Isn't it pleasurable to have the truth? Mm -hmm. I don't want the truth to be known. Yes, you do. 
Yes, do. Because the truth will bring you to repentance, and the Bible tells us to desire repentance. Desire godly repentance. Desire a godly heart. Amen. It puts up with anything. And it trusts God always. Talking about love. Talking love about love. Mm -hmm. Love puts up with anything and trusts God always. Now here's the thing about love when you, when you talk about puts up with anything. We're not talking about staying in physical danger. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. All right. But just because a person is acting wrong, it doesn't stop the fact that I love them. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the love walk. But, but look at this. It says it trusts God always. When you trust God, then you are able to have unconditional love mm -hmm. because you believe that God is going to do right by you. They're doing me wrong. And I don't, listen, even if they do you wrong, if you walk in love toward them and you do what is right, don't you trust God to come back and do what is right toward you? Amen. Maybe a person has uh, done something wrong to you in business. Maybe they've done something wrong to you that cost you financially, and you're angry about that. Mm -hmm. Well, love them. Get over the anger. It's done. It's gone. And trust God, because if I trust God, He can bring back to me what someone else stole. Amen. But as long as I hold it against them, I'm mm -hmm. not walking in love. Therefore, faith works by love. And I can say, well, I believe in God to restore what was stolen, and I'm so mad at them about it. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm walking in love toward them, then I open the door for my faith to work. If I'm not work, walking in love toward them, I'm closing the door on my faith. And I can never be pleasing to God without faith. Amen. Love always looks for the best. Don't always look for the negative. Don't always look for the negative. I, I heard Brother Hagin make this statement. A person said once, said, uh, said, I believe that you'd find something good to say about the devil. He said, well, he is persistent. <laughs> <laughs> Don't well, always true. look for negative to say about people. Yeah. I tell you, people give people down the road just want to be negative about everything. Right. You see this, you see, wah, 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 wah. it never looks back. Love never looks back. It doesn't look back. It looks forward. forward. It keeps going to the end. Love never, ever dies. Amen. Love never dies. Love is never gone. Why does love never die? Why does love never fail? Why does love bring light and not darkness? Because the Bible teaches us that God is love. Amen. Don't get in your mind that God equals love. Mm -hmm. God is not different some parts that equal love. Every part of God is love. Mm -hmm. That's who He is. That's His being. Mm -hmm. And because of that, when I walk in love, I walk in the things of God. Mm -hmm. I can have a godly life if I walk in love. Mm -hmm. But having a godly life is impossible if I'm always looking for the negative and watching the negative in my brothers and sisters. One of the greatest things you can do for your love walk mm -hmm. is turn off the news. Mm. Because the news will make you angry at people you'll never meet. And the Bible tells you to pray for those people. And you can pray for them without watching the news reports about them. Linda and I will soon be married 56 years. And uh, our love, I think, is greater today than it's ever been. And, I mean, we've no always doubt. remained in love. But yet it's because of our walk with Christ and loving each other, uh, it just gets better all the time. Thank you for watching. We'll be here next week. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs>